Hello, welcome to Design Matters TV. For years now I've been working with mixed media pieces where I'm involving paper with stitch and this is the kind of thing that I put together, simple sort of geometric shapes with nice little stitch detail and very often uh, to increase the range of papers that I have at my disposal I take my handmade papers and some found papers and I change them, I alter the surface by waxing them and in this example the pale background that you're seeing is some of my handmade paper just made as we did recently um, using you know old envelopes and photocopies and whatever stuff normally gets recycled we put it to an even more creative use by pulping it in a liquidizer and then lifting the sheets you've probably seen the video it was just a recent one so that's the the naked paper as it comes straight out of the, the vat, something like this. And you'll remember if you watch that video that I said that shortly I'd talk about how I developed that idea and change and modify these. Well, it might be hard to believe, but these papers that are sitting on the top in this kind of stitched collage are also exactly the same as that handmade paper, but with the addition of wax, it's introduced more depth of colour translucency and sometimes the veining because once the wax has dried and the, the paper is cold if you crumple it very gently you can introduce these fine lines that look like marbling. What I like as well is as you stitch and pierce those papers you get a little puncture mark in the wax so we'll talk about that um, further down the line but for the moment let me show you some of the before and afters of the paper. So. Here we go, that's a little handmade sheet that is that lovely golden colour because I actually put some dried um, onion skins in the vat of pulp when I lifted that paper. So that's immediately added some texture and some flecks of that kind of golden coffee colour almost. So that is the plain paper, but look how it's transformed with the addition of wax. It deepens the colour and you're instantly more aware of the, the little fibrous bits of onion skin that are in that uh, sheet of pulp. This is the same sort of idea. This, this piece of paper had some tea leaves in it. So you've got that dark speckledy effect and it's much more evident now that it's waxed and more translucent. Now you can have a great deal of fun taking a simple photocopy and waxing that. So here's an original, one of my moths that I've been working on as a, as a current theme, um, just onto very simple ordinary copy paper that you use in your, your home printer. Look what happens when I add wax to that. This is a very shiny surface, um, very smooth, and the wax it soaks through, it permeates the paper, but also if there's a little bit too much wax you get an, a surface effect where it sits on the top there, almost like in caustic art. But what I like about the effect of that, I'm not a big fan of pristine white paper and that little layer of wax um, has sort of aged and distressed the image, hasn't it? And that's largely because I used beeswax in that instance, so immediately that wax has got that sort of warmth, that honey colour. Um, that I know is going to have a part to play in some of my projects, I just love that effect. Now, these examples here are showing the effect of taking a bit of brown parcel paper the, it, it's been coloured slightly with some water-based paint here and then though uh, half of that sheet I've chopped up and just to experiment here this is it waxed, it's soaked right the way through you've got this lovely deeper rich honey colour to that um, almost tobacco colour slightly waxed surface and then if you crumple it do you see what I mean about introducing the veining so it looks almost like marble so if we compare that to the piece of brown parcel paper in its original state, all of a sudden we've now increased the palette that's available to us for paper and stitch. So we've got the original brown parcel paper, we've got that that's been crumpled and painted with watercolour, then we've got that waxed flat and waxed crumpled. So you see how you can build up a lovely little palette. It's the same with, with these. If I just lose that white, which looks glaringly out of place once you start to look at these. What a beautiful 
range of colours that would be in a single piece. I, I could get excited about that already just looking at the, the raw materials. Um, wax, as well as making the paper appear more translucent, will often darken it, especially if you're working onto a, a paper that's already quite dark in colour. So you see that this one, brown parcel paper again, painted with indigo blue watercolour paint and crumpled a little bit to introduce those um, nice little creases. When it's waxed, it's almost black. And interestingly, oh, I always look at the back of any of the papers that I customise or modify in some way because very often that can be used in combination and you'll have some interesting effects, some colour effects and textural effects on the back of the paper, sometimes even nicer than what you're seeing on the front. And then finally in this little introduction, when you're making your sheets of handmade paper, you've got the potential to bed things into the pulp. And in my last vat, I was using these um, fortune cookie wrappers. And in this particular example, the fortune cookie wrapper is really only sitting on the top and there was just the tiniest little bit of paper pulp securing that in place. But as it dried, that pulp becomes opaque and you can't see that image until you wax it and then it's revealed in all its glory. Now this one was trapped, it's the identical um, cookie wrapper, but it um, was trapped between two layers of pulp, so it was virtually invisible until I waxed it. And then again, you've got the idea of the, the gold square sitting within the coloured wrapper suddenly revealed. I'll put all these to one side and we'll get down to the practicalities. So let's talk first of all about the tools and equipment that you're going to need if you want to wax your papers. You need a heat source first of all, and I know I always bang on about health and safety, but we don't want wax near any naked flames. So if you've got an electric hob in your kitchen, you're probably fine with that. We've got this little single um, heat ring here, and that's perfect. And I've also got a metal tray with a, it's a Swiss roll tin. So it's got a slight uh, lip to the side because it's going to hold the wax and keep that safe. And then the wax itself. I favour a block of beeswax. You can get this from candle making supplies. Um, failing that, you might have a beeswax candle around the house or even a little stub of candle will be perfect for this. You can use the white household candles, but they don't impart such a rich colour. So look out for beeswax if you can. Then, because you've got heat involved here, you don't want to be touching the papers when they're actually saturated with hot wax because they will adhere to your fingers. So I've got here some little um, they're sugar tongs. It's not ideal, but you need some implement for lifting the hot paper from the heat source. And then I've got an old tea towel here, an old cloth, just to hold the tray steady as I'm working. Now you may wonder why I've got a whole heap of white plastic bags here. But the reason is, when I take the wax sheets out of the tray, they're going to cool down very rapidly. But while they're cooling down, the danger is that they'll sort of adhere to any surface they touch. So I purposely crumple some old plastic bags and just lightly drop the paper onto it so it's making very little surface contact with anything. And then after a few seconds, it's remarkably quick, um, you'll be able to peel them off and they're quite cool and you can lay them on the, the table out of the way. So I can see that this is hot enough now. I'm working in a very ve well ventilated space so this might be something that you can do out in the, the garage or um, out in the garden even on a still day if you've got a little source of heat like we've got here. But don't do this and be cooped up and be breathing in any fumes. I'm sure that when you burn a candle you're aware that there's a certain amount of smell from it and we're actually going to be melting this wax so just be sensible about what you're doing. Now I'm going to test that I've got some sufficient temperature here. I'm actually working with my heat source on its lowest possible setting and it's melting that wax immediately so I know that it's warm enough and all I'm going to do now is drop my photocopy of my moth. Now instantly that is absorbing that wax that I just put in that tray. We only want enough wax in the tray. We don't want it swimming. We just want it a sufficient a quantity of wax so that it will saturate and permeate that piece of paper. And you can see now why I need these little tongs, can't you? 
So I can move it round in the existing little bit of beeswax that's in that tray. I can press it down a little bit if it needs to make greater contact and flip it round. And it's taking surprisingly little wax to saturate. But do you see how it's darkening? So you know which areas are waxed and which might need just another little touch. So we can just hold that over the top. You soon get a feel for how much wax your papers are going to need. And of course it depends on the nature of the paper, um, how absorbent they are and so on. So I just want to capture this bit, this end, till I see that bit of the photocopy darken. Now it's got it, that's the last little bit. And then I lift it out with my tongs. There's no excess, so there's nothing to drip. I've just been really quite mean about the amount of wax I've put in that tray. And then I lift it over and onto my heap of plastic. And then I'm just going to carry on. Let's try one of the handmade papers. I'll just introduce, these are quite fragile. So I'm going to put a little bit of the melted wax into the tray, first of all. And then I'm just going to drop that to the surface instantly it soaks that up. Now on that hot surface I can just hold this block to make sure all of the paper gets saturated. My tray is longer than the heat source, than the, the ring that it's sitting on. So from time to time, you know, the ends of this tray, this metal tray, are not as warm as the middle. So I'll just slide it down until that starts to, to get a little bit of additional heat. There we go. Now these are fragile. I've got to try my darndest to lift this off very gently. You see how delicate that is. I can see every little fleck that was in the paper pulp when I made that sheet. That's a very, very fine and delicate sheet of paper. And that's all there is to it. And I've got a whole heap of things here that I'm going to experiment with. Um, so what I like to do is when I have a session like this, I like to make a whole stack of papers and then I put them away and one day when I, you know, I'm in the need of a little project, I've got all of those resources ready and I don't have to start from scratch. So I've got a little print here. I'm going to try my print. This is on a sheet of really quite thick handmade paper and it's an acrylic print. i just drop that in and see what happens to that. Yeah, quite absorbent, darkened immediately. I can still see the image of the print. That's lovely. And I'll just move it down onto the hotter bit of the tray to blot up that excess. So uh, these wax papers have only been sitting here for literally a few seconds and already you can see that's solidified and cool. And I hope you can see on camera just how, that's the other half of that sheet of handmade paper. Do you see how dark it is? And you can see how translucent it is because you can actually see my fingers and the edge of that paper through this one. The very delicate handmade papers are a little more fiddly to work with because obviously there's a danger that they'll tear quite readily. But it's worth the effort, I think, because they're so beautiful when you've finished with them. And already, I think if you look at this range of papers I've just done in literally a few minutes you can see how the palette of colours could begin to work together. This last little one has actually got some fabric patches that I've put into it. So it's a quick and easy technique you just be careful you know you're working with hot wax and slight fumes so just be very sensible how you do it but I think it's well worth the effort and I'm really quite excited to start a stitch project and I'll show you that soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.